Welcome to ECA Limo, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the second topic of Form 1, we discussed measurements and we discussed quantities and in particular basic quantities. We said we have a basic quantity called thermodynamic temperature and these basic quantities we said they can only be measured by using a measuring instrument. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss an instrument which is used to measure thermodynamic temperature, that is a thermometer. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define a thermometer and then explain the different features of a common thermometer, then list at least three thermometric liquids and then finally give our uh, explain the properties of a thermometric liquid thermometric liquid is a liquid which is used inside a thermometer so what is a thermometer a thermometer is an instrument which is used to measure temperature as you can see on the screen this is a thermometer and it's used to measure temperature of a material or of matter in this case temperature of gases temperature of liquids and it can also measure temperature of solids there are many types of thermometers and they are designed for a specific use and as we are going to see we have thermometers which we use in hospitals we call them clinical thermometer we have common thermometers the one that we use in laboratories then we have a six thermometers which we use in weather stations to measure maximum and minimum temperatures and then we are going to see another important thermometer which we call a bimetallic thermometer remember we discussed heat thermal expansion and we talked about bimetallic strips now the first category of thermometers we have is a liquid in glass thermometer or which we call a common thermometer as you can see it on the screen this is a, a good example of a common thermometer now the liquid commonly used inside a liquid in a glass thermometer is mercury we always use mercury however alcohol can also be used now it is important to know that a liquid used in a thermometer is commonly known as a thermometric liquid so if i mention thermometric liquid just know i'm talking about a liquid which is used inside a thermometer and i've said in most cases we use mercury because mercury we are going to see it's opaque you can see it easily and then sometimes we use alcohol now we have specific features of a liquid in a glass thermometer and the first feature that we have is a bulb a bulb as you can see on the screen you can see the bulb there it contains a thermometric liquid that liquid inside is called a thermometric liquid and it's thin this bulb is very thin it has a very thin wall to increase sensitivity so the reason why we have a bulb which is very thin is to increase sensitivity in this case we mean to allow quick heat transfer from the body which you are measuring its temperature to the liquid which is inside or which we call a thermometric uh, liquid now we have another feature of a thermometer which we call a capillary pole a capillary pole you can see it that narrow uh, pole inside which allows the liquid to rise and fall uh, when the temperature changes so the, the function of a capillary pole is to allow the liquid inside or the thermometric liquid to rise and fall when there is change in temperature it has a smaller diameter it has a very small diameter to increase the accuracy remember whenever we have a liquid inside a, a pore or a, inside a hollow surface they will experience or they will form what we call meniscus so for us to reduce the effect of meniscus formed then we use a thermometric or a capillary pore with a very small diameter so that to increase the accuracy or to decrease 
the meniscus which will be formed in that case it means we are going to increase our accuracy this one we call it a capillary pore and not a capillary tube most students confuse this with capillary tube capillary tube we don't use this one we don't use capillary tubes we use capillary pore so if you use capillary tube you will miss and then another feature of a um, liquid in the glass thermometer like the one you can see on the screen is the glass stem the glass stem is the outer the outer part which is surrounding the capillary pore and the function of this um, glass stem is made of thick glass this uh, stem is made of a very thick glass and this thick glass strengthens the thermometer is the one that makes the thermometer very strong to protect the liquid inside so it makes the thermometer very strong so that the liquid which is inside is protected especially when a thermometer undergoes a slight fall then the thick glass also act as a magnifying glass to magnify the liquid thread inside so whenever we have a glass which is large or which is a uh, thick it is going to act as a magnifying glass so magnifying glass it means we will be able to see the thin capillary ball which has been magnified now for accuracy purposes so this is how a common thermometer looks like and those are these features we have a bulb which is very thin to increase sensitivity we have a capillary pore which is a small diameter to increase accuracy and the way we increase accuracy is by minimizing the meniscus which is formed and this capillary pore also give room for rise and fall of the thermometric liquid when there is change in temperature we also have a glass system which is thick to strengthen the thermometer and also protect the liquid inside also the thickness of the glass system magnify the glass uh, to or, or act as a magnifying glass to magnify the liquid thread then there are three thermometric liquids which are commonly used the first one is mercury the second one is alcohol so we have mercury alcohol and then we have oil of chrysol these three are the commonly used thermometric liquids but in this case we are going to study the first two that is mercury and then we are also going to study uh, alcohol so we're going to talk about mercury and alcohol their similarities and their differences so what are the properties of a good thermometric liquid the first property is that it should not wet the glass it should not wet the glass remember we said substances which do not wet the glass they have high or a higher cohesive force than adhesive force so it means the substance which you are going to use or the liquid which you are going to use they must have higher force of cohesion than a uh, uh, force of addition then it should not or it should expand uniformly remember we have other substances which when you heat instead of expanding they contract like water undergoes what we call anomalous expansion of water so a good thermometric liquid should not have anomalous expansion it will it should, should expand uniformly and contract uniformly or expand regularly and contract regularly another feature it should be a good conductor of heat remember this thermometer or this thermometric liquid is going to measure change in temperature so it should be able to absorb heat very fast and then conduct the heat within the liquid within a very short time so that any change in volume can be noticed so it should be a good conductor of heat and then another feature or another property it should be visible it should be visible it should be seen easily we have other liquids which are colorless we cannot use them so we are going to see since alcohol or ethanol is colorless for us to use it as a, thermo a thermometric liquid we have to color it we have to add a color inside uh, alcohol but for mercury we have said it's opaque or it can be seen easily we are going to see that later so it should be visible 
Then another one, it should have high boiling point. It should have high boiling point. The thermometric liquid we want to use should have high boiling point in such a way that it does not change to gaseous state before it measures some good temperature. So a liquid which we want to use or which we are going to use should have a very high boiling point and then of course low freezing point so that it does not change to a solid before it measures the temperature that we want. So a good thermometric liquid should have a wide, in short, this one we can call it a wide range of temperature. Wide range of temperature. Wide range of temperature means high boiling point, then low freezing point. Then why can't we use water as a thermometric liquid? Water is not used as a thermometric liquid because one, water wets the glass. Water wets the glass, it means water has high, it has water has high adhesive force than cohesive force. Water has higher force of attraction between molecules of different kinds than cohesive force, which is molecules of the same kind. Then water expands irregularly. Remember, we said water experience what we call anomalous expansion of water. Now, since water expands or contracts from 0 to 4 degrees Celsius and also expands from 4 to 0 degrees Celsius, then we cannot rely it as a thermometric liquid because we need liquids which can expand regularly. Then water is a pad conductor of heat or poor conductor of heat. It does not conduct heat very fast. It takes time for it to conduct heat. We are going to see that in the next uh, uh, topic. Then water is invisible. It cannot be seen easily because water is colorless. So whenever you use it, you cannot be able to see how it is rising and falling inside the thermometer. And then it has relatively high freezing point. Water has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius. Zero degrees Celsius. It means you cannot measure the temperature of about negative uh, 5 degrees Celsius because it freezes easily. It has a relatively high freezing point, so we cannot use it. We need someone or something or a liquid which has low freezing point. And remember also, water has a relatively a low melting or boiling point. It means it can change to gaseous state at 100 degrees Celsius. That is too low. We need something which can measure about 200, 300 degrees Celsius. So we have differences between mercury and alcohol as a thermometric liquid. And in this case, we want to realize or to discover what liquid can we can use at high temperature and what liquid we can use at lower temperature. So mercury has a high boiling point of 357 degrees Celsius, alcohol has relatively low boiling point of 78 degrees Celsius. So if you want to measure temperature of substances which is very high, then you use mercury, this high temperature. When you want high temperature, you use mercury in glass thermometer. Now, another point is that mercury has relatively higher melting point. Remember we said we want substances which have all liquids which have relatively low melting point. So alcohol has lowest melting point in this case, which is negative 115 degrees Celsius. So if you need to measure temperature, low temperature, then you can use uh, alcohol in a glass thermometer. Then mercury is a good thermal conductor. It conducts electricity very fast. Because mercury is a metal in liquid state. This one is a metal. Metal in liquid state. Then uh, alcohol is a poor thermal conductor. It's a poor, it's not a bad, but a poor. It conducts uh, heat slowly. Then we have mercury expands regularly. Then uh, alcohol expands slightly irregular. So we said we need substances which expands regularly, then we will go for mercury. 
Then we have mercury does not wet the glass. Mercury has a very high cohesive force, does not wet the glass. Then alcohol wets the glass. And we said we need substances which do not wet the glass. Then in this case, you will prefer mercury. And then another one which you need to know is that mercury is opaque. Mercury is opaque. Then this one is transparent. Mercury is opaque, it means you can see it easily, it's visible. Uh, alcohol is transparent. For you, for you to use it, you must color. You must add a color to it so that you can use it. So a very important point to note here is that alcohol thermometer is best for use in very cold conditions because it has a relatively low freezing point, which is about... 100 negative 115 degrees Celsius, but it cannot be used in very high temperatures because it has a boiling point is relatively low, which is 78 degrees Celsius. Mercury thermometer is best for use in high temperature because of its high boiling point of about 357 degrees Celsius, but cannot be used in very low temperatures because it has a relatively high freezing point of negative 39. Remember we said we want substances which have low freezing point and high boiling point. So if you need to measure a temperature of very high temperature, then you use mercury in the glass thermometer. And if you need low temperature, then you will opt to use alcohol thermometer. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss the clinical thermometer and the sixth thermometer and how they work.